Good afternoon. My name is Sandra Combs and I am the professor and facilitator for the Race Gender Media class. The Race Gender Media class which is co-sponsoring this event this afternoon. First I want to thank all of you for coming. Coming to find out about the other side at Arkansas State University. Especially since we're in the middle of International Awareness Week at ASU. Let me tell you about the idea for this panel. It evolved out of the discussion in our class after we read a column, which hopefully all of you have copies of and can read at some time later today or at your leisure. Um, on one side, it says, student frustrated by international assumptions, which was printed in the Herald October 15th. And the other side is students don't feel welcome, which was printed November 17th in the Herald. There was a discussion in our class since one of our classmates, Jennifer Wells, who's on the panel today, wrote the column about students frustrated by international assumptions. There were copies of the story distributed in class and we began to ask each other whether we thought this was true. Well, it's hard to tell when you're not walking on that other side whether it's true or not. So we decided to have a panel discussion in our area, Department of Communications, and invite other people to participate and say what they felt was going on. So today we have the Department of Communications represented by the Department of Journalism and the very talented radio television um, staff and students taping this program for us, which will be shown at a later date in, on channel 18, KASU-TV. We're also co-sponsored by the Diversity Initiatives in the Office of Academic Affairs. We really appreciate all the support that you have given us in this. This is the way it's going to work today. We have two moderators. The first one is Renette McCargo, and she will be guiding the panel through the first part of the, the panel discussion. And Michael Rounds, who will be handling the questions. We have passed out index cards, so if you, you have a question that you'd like to pose to all of the panelists or anyone in particular, we have cards for you to fill out and ask questions. We thought that that would expedite time, so that's what we want to do. We want to get to as many questions about the other side as we possibly can. You will also be able to um, talk to the panel people represented on the panel later on um, after the program's been taped. Okay. I ask now that if you have cell phones, I know that most of you are in that FOMO generation, if you would silence them, you know, um, that would be greatly appreciated. But without any further ado, Renette will come and have our panel introduce themselves I want to thank you again for coming because I believe and the race gender media class believes that this will be an informative and beneficial panel discussion for the Arkansas State University family. Thanks again for coming. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Renette McCargo and I'm a graduate student taking Professor Combs race, gender and media course. As she said, this is International Awareness Week, and today we're going to discuss multiculturalism and the international experience. Let's, uh, let's meet our panelists. I know we have Ms. Blair here first, but let's start with the students, and then Ms. Blair, I would like for you to introduce yourself uh, afterwards. For the students, I want, us, I want you to tell us your name, where you're from, what is your major, how long you've been at ASU, and tell us why you came to ASU. Let's begin with Ms. Wells. Hey, I'm Jennifer Wells, and where am I from? I get that asked the most, so 
I was adopted at the age of two from China, and then I grew up in a small town in southwest Iowa, and then four years ago I moved to Mountain Home, Arkansas, and then now I'm here, and I started out like at ASU Mountain Home to like get my gen eds done, an associate of arts degree for less expensive, and then I transferred here now this year, and I'm a junior and majoring in news editorial journalism. Hi everyone, my name is Asuka Morimoto. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Um, it's my first time, fourth year at ASU, but during my third year, I went to Washington DC for a semester and then to Huelva, Spain for another semester as a study abroad program. Um, I studied political science in Spanish. I'm so happy to be here to share some of my experiences. Hello, uh, my name is Arda. I'm from the Republic of Turkey. Um, this, well, I've been here since 2008, and um, I'm, I'm a graduate student in uh, radio television. Uh, I'm studying mass communications. I I came to this university due to the fact that I felt um, that I wanted to be in a, in a kind of on the, in the countryside, so to say, away from cities. Um, get to see the, the nature. <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Sean Pei Tang, comes from China. Uh, my, I'm a graduate student and my major is business administration in business college. And uh, this is the second year I came to America. Uh, I choose ASU because I think Jonesboro is a good, is a good place to study and with peaceful environment. Um, and uh, ASU is uh, and ASU has a I think strong uh, academic background. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Abdulkader McKenzie. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I'm an undergraduate student, business major, finance. Uh, I've been here since uh, 2009, uh, almost three years. Uh, I came here basically because of my family, I have a relative here, so Jonesboro was uh, the perfect place for them. Thank you. Ms. Blair, would you tell us about yourself and your role on campus? Hello, um, my name is Naya Blair and I'm the Assistant Dean of Students. I direct the Multicultural Center here on campus as well as non-traditional student services. I've been here for about a year, and so basically to kind of describe what I do, I do diversity programs and initiatives with the help of the Office of Diversity and Initiatives and the Leadership Center, and I work with multiple student groups on campus. Thank you so much. And at the end of the table, we have Michael Rounds. He is our moderator, um, our set, one of our moderators, and he will be uh, accepting cards from you where you have your questions and your comments. So. Um, I hope you had a chance to read the article while, you, um, while you're writing your questions and passing them along to Mr. Rounds. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the articles that you were given. Now, we were told that um, there are between 50 and 60 countries represented at Arkansas State University. And as Professor Combs said, we were faced with an article where we realized some international students did not feel welcome here. Uh, Jennifer Wells is in Professor Cohn's class and she felt compelled to write an article, uh, write a response to that. Ms. Wells, would you tell us exactly why you felt compelled to write something about the article you read? Yeah, we were talking about it in class and um, some people kind of inspired me to write it. Like one student said that they were welcome and they're an international student and I was like, wow, I'm not an international student and yet I don't really feel welcome. And then some other students said, yeah, I don't really feel welcome. I mean, they don't have to throw a party for us. And yeah, I don't expect that either, but just that too. And. I guess the stereotype I get is that people don't think I speak English well, so I feel like I get ignored, and yeah. 
Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Mor Morimoto? Yes. Would you tell us about your experience since you've been here? I forgot that I told, I forgot to tell you the reason why I came here to ASU. ASU was one of the one of the schools that I could choose in Japan with the agency that I'm involved in, and it was a good good opportunity to learn American culture since I came here. But the feeling that I had is the English is a critical role to get involved in with American people, and I've been with some Amer I was in American society which I had to speak English all the time twenty four seven. But no one really helped me being in the group. I was the one that had to be in the group. That's why that's the difference here in the US and maybe Japan, which is homogeneous country that many people have the same opinions or like um, same ideas. They don't even have to talk about the ideas that they have. But in America, it's a diversity culture and we have to share the ideas with languages, with words and vocabularies. That's where international people feel behind of American people. And I guess Americans don't intend to make international students isolate or anything. I know that, but because of the difficulties of English, people can feel a little bit different from native speakers. Make sure to write down your questions and your comments if you want to ask a question of Ms. Morio Moto or anyone on the panel. Now I have a, a question for anyone on the panel. Would you recommend ASU to your friends? Why or why not? What about self-segregation? Is it any different with what sororities and fraternity members or even athletes do uh, when you see them maybe on campus or in the cafeteria or in the library? Mr. Chanel, would you like to respond to that? Um, which one would you like me to talk about? Either one. Uh, would you recommend a friend to ASU? Why or why not? Or what about self-segregation? Well, educationally, um, it will be a good opportunity, yes. I might actually get to recommend my friends. Um, well, one of the main reasons this um, is a great place educationally is, is, is that it's not exactly that active. Um, there's not a lot to do if, if you're seeking uh, attractions. Basically, you could actually focus on your studies and uh, get through the college education that you actually require for your future job or career. Um, as for segregation, I think it was. Uh, do, you, do you feel like people self-segregate? Do they clump into groups? Uh, yes, um, they, do, they do segregate, especially um, especially the new internationals. Uh, I remember when we first came here back in 2008, we, we never segregated, we tried to blend in. We tried to um, make friends from all over the university, try to get to know everybody and every single person um, that was in and out of our classes. Um, but recently I, I do get to see that um, most internationals uh, tend to segregate themselves from the rest of the university trying to um, get together with their own nation, their own nationality. Um, everybody, everybody from Turkey tends to hang out with Turks. Everybody from China tends to hang out with the Chinese. Uh, everybody from Japan tends to hang out with the Japanese. Um, it's just, um, I'm not really sure of the reason. It might be language, it might be uh, interests, uh, it might be the differences, but generally that is, uh, that is quite a problem. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tong, would you like to respond? Yeah, um, generally, in my opinion, I think ASU is a friendly, is a friendly school. Uh, let me show you an example. Uh, last month, uh, the Chinese organization uh, in ASU held a, a mid-autumn festival party 
uh, here, th this room, yeah. And uh, many Chinese students and other international students and native students come to enjoy together. And uh, uh, I remember that uh, a bank uh, of America came here and showed their program with everyone. I think this is, uh, this is um, communication, it's a kind of communication that, uh, every, uh, that uh, each culture uh, uh, get together, show their, special, show their specific. And uh, I think every corner, in, in every corner of the ASU, we can see the native students and uh, international students uh, learn together, work together with the project and uh, discuss the programs. And I think this happened every day and everywhere here. So, but um, I think when students get together and uh, deal with uh, the cases, maybe some discrimination and other bad things will happen. It is uh, uh, unavoidable, I think. So, but I think generally ASU is a friendly school. Thank you. Thank you. Now I see that Mr. Rounds has some questions, but first I want to know if Mr. Al McKenzie and Ms. Blair has any comments about some of the questions. Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, I find I found uh, Jonesboro is very friendly, uh, especially for people who came from Middle East, especially in Saudi Arabia. We are very family oriented and very conservative. This would be very perfect for a student with a family uh, to, raise, to raise their children in, in Tri-County and uh, uh, conservative place. However, uh, there is something that, that as international, we are uh, very concerned to build a relationship with the native people. I mean the US citizens. Uh, we came a long way from our countries to expose to the culture rather than uh, just uh, going to school. So I find it somewhat difficult to build a relationship with the, with the people uh, uh, from Jonesboro. I, I don't know. Uh, I agree somewhat with the, what I read in the articles, but uh, by all means, uh, they are friendly, but it's very difficult to build a relationship. Ms. Blair? Well, of course, I would encourage everyone to come to ASU. Um, when it talks about regarding self-segregation, I, I don't have a problem with various groups segregating themselves at times. I think that everyone finds comfort in being around a group of people who may look like you, who may have various things in common. But I think that you have to keep in mind and have to make sure that all of us do not live our, our days and spend most of our time around people who just look like us or who have the same commonalities as us. So we have to do a better job of being able to not just intermingle with people in class, but outside of class as well, but it's okay to want to go to lunch with people who look like you on some days, and some days to go to lunch with people who, who from a different country or from a different state. And I think that uh, for Americans, and I'm just not talking about all Americans, I'm the only, uh, well, no, I'm not the only American on the panel, but to say that we have to step outside your comfort zone and a lot of times for American students, that's very hard to do. And you're expecting other people, um, meaning when I say other, in this case, international students or people who are not the same as you to come to you first when it has to be a two-way street. We have, it's a learning process for everyone because not only should international students come here to get a different learning experience than they would in their home country, this is an opportunity for American students to be able to interact and learn from people from different countries that you may or may not have an opportunity to visit. Mr. Rounds, do you have some questions? Yes, ma'am. This question is for the entire panel. Other than language, what is one of the most prevalent assumptions or stereotypes you face from others? How does it usually show up? Anyone can answer. Well, I, have, uh, I have a story I, I wanted to share with you. 
uh, one year ago, uh, it happened to sit with uh, one of my classmates, and uh, she never uh, say hi or never speak to me. And whenever she passed the uh, roll, roll sheet, she just push it like this. Uh, after we had the presentation and I spoke about uh, about myself and my country, yeah. Uh, after that presentation, she uh, totally uh, uh, dealt with me in a different way. So we discussed, and uh, she she had already stereotyped some of of. Uh, of her ideas that were wrong, then after the presentation, uh, she changed her way to deal with us. Would anyone else like to respond to the question also? Okay, Mr. Rounds, you have another question. Okay, this question is from Jennifer Wells. You say you want us to welcome you, but how do you expect students to know to know you when you don't reach out to us as well. As well. I don't know, just um, to be friendly and nice. I mean, I know I, I'm introverted and reserved until I get to know you, but I don't know, just kind of be friendly and nice to me, I guess. And if you're like the same way as me, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Briefly, what I think is that no one is trying not to be friendly. Some people are shy, some people are more friendlier than others. But the f individualism is what we have in this country. And even when you go to class, you meet some people. And we can say, hi, or how are you? But that's all what we have in the conversation. Every time we have, hi, how are you, that's all. And maybe it's good to have communication, but we always focus on classes, homework, or work. So what it is different from America and others is concern a little bit more about others, not only in the conversation with languages, because I was a little scared personally when native speakers were talking because it because I felt like there was no feeling in the language, feeling in the words. The words are so sharpened and it's more like facial communication more than inside communication. That's what we need to do in the United States, the entire United States, language is, diff is important, but with the language, we need feeling or a little bit more intention to communicate with people. Thank you, Ms. Morioto. Ms. Blair, did you want to comment on that? Thank you. Okay. Mr. Rounds, you have more questions? Okay. Uh, this question is for Shang Tong from China. Uh, in my opinion, I think that uh, uh, the respect and uh, friendship are different. Uh, you know, as an international students, uh, we have totally different culture and um, maybe totally different childhood with the native speakers, native students. So uh, it is, uh, we need to admit that it is really hard to uh, enter the real American culture. Um, it is really very hard. But uh, maybe the basic respect, I think it is very easy to do. And um, for me, I think uh, in this point, I think mm, most of American students or natives uh, students do well. Uh, when I go to school every day, when I met the, uh, my classmates or teachers or even just strangers, most of the time we just uh, say uh, 
hey, hello, how are you doing? And uh, something like that. I think it's very, it's very good. It, is, um, it will give the good feeling from the morning and uh, until the whole day. So I think, just like uh, I said just now, I think American people, are, most of American people, most American students here are very friendly. And uh, in order to improve it, uh, I think uh, it is very important to make a deeply communication each other. I mean that uh, between American students to international students, we may communicate with uh, the cultural and uh, something like sports, economics, policy, something like, like that. I think the deep communication will improve and uh, strengthen the, the relationship between us. Thank you. More questions, Mr. Rounds? Yes, indeed. OK, this question is for Naya Blair. Is there a plan to have an international dorm? Well, first, let me give a preface to saying I do not work in residence life, um, <laughs> so I cannot uh, fully state but I um, that I'm not I have not been made aware of that so that does not mean that that's not happening and that does not mean that that will happen um, however I do know um, from meeting with residents life here recently that there is an opportunity for um, there are three or four residence halls on campus in particular floors where they will pair an international student with an American student who wants an American student who wants to live with an international student, so that um, both students can learn from one another, but also to uh, make the transition more easy for our international students here on campus to be more engulfed in American culture. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is open to the panel. Anyone can answer. How do you feel about joining organizations that don't have many people that look like you? I'll start out by asking you this. I think um, as an administrator and as a former student leader that it is important to join organizations that you have students who uh, or other people who don't look like you. I think it's, an, it's important to join organizations you have people who look like you because student organizations are a lot of times the opportunities where you're going to plan events, where you're going to meet people, and it's not going to be in such a formal setting such as a classroom. So that's your opportunity to learn about different cultures and to also teach other people about your culture. So I think it's important. Would anyone else like to ask that question? If not, moving on. Okay, this question is for Otter. What are some of your biggest obstacles with race since you've been here at ASU? Well, racially, um, personally, I haven't exactly had any problems with race, to be completely honest. I've, uh, I've, never, I've never exactly been um, comfortable in my own country myself. I, I always liked hanging out with internationals, I always felt more comfortable in an international environment. I've lived in Europe most of my life. And um, um, racially, I didn't exactly have any problems at all. I just had, uh, I had problems culturally. Um, the traditions, the, the lifestyle within the environment. Um, since I've lived in cities most of my life, um, getting to see people who are really, really friendly, just in the middle of the street, who don't exactly know you, was uh, was a great deal of, uh, of pr it was it was pretty problematic to be completely honest. Um, I mean, they they open up to you, they they talk to you, they they you actually get to know them personally uh, without even intending to actually get to know them. Um, this was a big problem that I've faced, uh, but then I got used to it after a while. Um, also, the um, uh, the culture where the whole uh, gun freedom and um, uh, the whole uh, well, what do you call it? Um, well, people are really, really friendly. I'll just say that they're extremely friendly. Um, 
so it, it was it was really hard getting used to that. That was one of the most uh, greatest opt obstacles that I've ever actually had to get through. But racially, there really is there really wasn't any problem at all. I I don't see any segregation or categorization or stereotypes in my own opinion. Everybody's human for me. Mr. Brown, more question. Okay, this question is to Naya Blair. It says, what is the university's efforts to solve the problem of self-segregation? Again, I am not chancellor. <laughs> However, <laughs> I will say that the university is, is making strides in a various different effort efforts through various different offices to help with self-segregation. I think one, by always encouraging all students to intermingle together and talking about the differences that each student brings and various cultures bring, so in your classes and making connections courses. Um, another example would be uh, from student activities and student activities board, student government having programs and initiatives that are encouraging students to come together and learn about other cultures. I think by having uh, various staff such as myself, Nathaniel Lynch and International Services, encouraging the different populations that we work with to go and get to know other people. And again, I always say on the flip side, getting other people to uh, show, in, show that they have something to value as well to bring to this university. So I think through various programs and initiatives, of course, um, and, and encouraging people to study abroad, because one thing we don't realize is that a lot of American students, and particularly in the South, and I'll just say, you know, in Jonesboro, don't have those experiences of meeting people who are, don't look like them or who have the same thoughts as they have. So by encouraging people to study abroad and get outside of yourself, those are tangible ways that we work to help um, get rid of self-segregation each and every day. Okay, this question is for Otta, Al McKenzie, and Askua Morimoto. Okay, do you feel that other groups are isolated who are not international students? If so, who? Also, do you feel isolated in the classroom setting? Let's hear from Ms. Morimoto. Ms. Morimoto. Okay, so the question is, is there any people who are isolated other than international students? Yes. And do you feel isolated in the classroom setting? Classroom setting? Classroom. Um, I don't feel I was isolated in the classroom. However, um, I was asked sometimes about Pearl Harbor, and that was my racial program, being Japanese here in the U.S. Personally, I see historical issues different from present time, and I think many people feel in that way, or I hope. But I was blamed about Pearl Harbor just because I was um, I was a Japanese, and that was um, that was my racial program. But in um, other than you think that other maybe, students are like segregated or when I first came here f to ASU, many different race races were separated in, for example, in the cafeteria. And now I feel the atmosphere of cafeteria is better than before, maybe because more international students came and people don't feel international students special. I was seen, I, I felt that I was a special person in the classroom where there was no other international students. But more and more people come to ASU from other countries, maybe people realize the diversity and the atmosphere is getting better, I think. Um, well, as far as segregation in class, I, 
I actually prefer to be segregated in class. Uh, it actually helps me understand the, the educational um, material better. I'm not really a, a social person in class. Um, but no, I am not segregated in the class in any way, and it, it kind of does bother me. <laughs> but, um, well, as far as other segregation, other than internationals, um, there are many types of segregations. Um, some are due to friends, some are um, people with the same mindset gather together and hang out in the same specific location in a, cap in a cafeteria environment. And some segregations, like sororities or fraternities, um, who who tend to get together and only hang out with each other um, is, is another type of segregation. Our problem as, as Turkish students when we first came here in 2008 was, um, was with sororities and fraternities. We never really knew sororities or fraternities, the whole brotherhood, sisterhood th um, thing. It, it, was, it was really new to all of us. Um, and um, since it was called Greek life as well, it really didn't really make any sense to us um, <laughs> in any way. Um, I, I do not know if you, uh, if you know, but Greeks and Turks have a really uh, bad past, uh, therefore, <laughs> um, when you name it as Greek life, it, it turns out to be um, a little offensive for Turks when, get, when we get to first meet them, but it's really got nothing to do with it. But, um, we as Turks, we, we had a problem with uh, with the sororities and fraternities. We most sorority girls when we first came here uh, tend to look really really gorgeous. Um, <laughs> they look they look absolutely amazing. So we we try to get to know them a little better. But since they were all, I remember a conversation I had with a with a sorority girl back in 2009. Um, we asked her if, if she'd like to come to a party which we were having at our at our place. And she said, I'm sorry, I am reserved. Um, we, we didn't understand what that was. Um, apparently, they don't, really, they don't really like partying outside of their own fraternity environment, their own sorority environment or, or something. So I never really dwelled in the, dwelled in the matter after that. But uh, I don't know, they, they might have different opinions about the matter. There might be one specific uh, girl. Um, but yeah, uh, segregation. Except for internationals, yes, it is present. It, it's all, it's uh, has always been present, and always will be present. So, yeah. um, yes, uh, I think uh, students by nature they segregate themselves uh, uh, inside their comfort, comfort zones. People like me, I like to talk to them more than I do for the uh, for the uh, other students. However, I need to uh, get out of my uh, comfort zone and approach the uh, U.S. citizen or Chinese citizen or any, anybody else other than my, uh, where I came from. Uh, yes, uh, but I think uh, isolated, I don't, uh, I don't think that uh, I felt isolated in any of uh, my classes. This question is for Jennifer and Chantal. What have you done to be inclusive of African Americans on campus? Strategies and techniques to get to know African Americans, and the same questions regarding the white Americans. Well, um, all my roommates are African Americans, and the one that like lives closest to me is also named Jennifer, and she's been really nice to me and just embraced me. And um, Carmen, who's also in this class, has just really been so nice, and they let me hang out with them. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I'd probably be I would be a loner on the weekends. So just that's how I do. And then white Americans. I've been around them like my whole life until like I came here and it's so diverse, but all my close friends are white Americans, so. Thank you. I think uh, different races are brothers, are brothers in the world. No matter, uh, no, ma no matter uh, Africa America or white America, or other races here. Uh, I can share the experience I uh, 
it happened maybe last year when I just came here, maybe the first month or second month. Uh, at that time, it is a night, it's a deeply night when I back to go back, uh, when I go back to my uh, dormitory, uh, just myself. Uh, it is really very dark outside and uh, suddenly a black man uh, uh, just uh, uh, greeted me and uh, say, how are you doing? You know, it is very dark outside and when I, when I heard of this, uh, it, I feel very nervous and I feel very afraid of it. I never seen it before actually, so, but, and I, I just uh, reply him, uh, how are you doing again? And then I just uh, run away, you know, it's very, <laughs> yeah, it's very nervous at that time. But when I uh, remind these things some days later, uh, I feel it's, it, is, uh, it is a kind of greeting, it is kind of, uh, uh, I think it's very normal in America. And I think from that time, I, I think I need to adapt to this environment and this culture. So uh, I think uh, African-American people is very friendly. And uh, for the uh, white America, yeah, I think uh, another thing is, uh, is very sinful for me. Um, when I first uh, when I first came here, uh, I attend the activities uh, of a church named uh, Cornerstone, uh, and uh, I recognize the pastor, Bill Chris, and uh, uh, an old couple named Leonard and Mary. This old, old couple and the, the pastor are very friendly to me and my roommates. Uh, the old couple uh, picked us uh, to their church every week, picked us uh, every week. Um, so far, I think we built a very, uh, very good relationship and very good friendliness with each other. And uh, I always uh, kidding with my friends said that uh, Leonard and Mary are my grandpa and the grandparents in America. And uh, one thing that made me very moving is uh, last December, uh, I need to move out from my old, uh, I need to move out from my old uh, department, uh, my old uh, dormitory. And uh, at that time, we don't have charge, even a car, we don't have, we don't have it. And I told the trouble to Leonard and Mary and Pastor Dale, and they, they just uh, say, okay, no problem, we will help you. And uh, the old couple and old pastor helped us to move the heavy cases to our new apartment. I was so moving at that time. You know, as um, international students here, we, we have no relatives here, and um, it is very precious for us. This this experience is very precious for us, and um, I th thanks for your helping. Or we will never, or we will don't know how to do it, how to deal with the so many cases. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Round. Just a moment. I just wanted to let you know that we have about ten minutes left in the forum. Okay, this question is for Naya Blair. What do you have to say about international students getting dropped off to stay alone in a motel for a week in a new country? Do you feel that there is potential for welcoming new students to ASU? What was the second part of that? Do you feel that there is potential for welcoming students, new students, to ASU? I really don't get the second part of that. Um, but the first part of what do I feel about international students being dropped off at the hotel to stay, the motel, to stay by themselves? Yes. Um, in a new country. In a new country. Well, and I'm assuming that this happens. Um, you know, I think that it would be very scary for anyone to have to experience that. Um, however, I think that there hopefully are things in place that brings that support for those students while they're there temporarily because I think that that is a temporary 
uh, housing location, if I'm correct. Um, and that hopefully that that will be something that we would not have to have our international students experience. Hopefully that's something that can um, be rectified or, or fixed where we, we won't have that option at all. Mr. Rounds, I have, uh, I have a couple of questions and then we have to end. Uh, one question is, what about the holidays? How do the international students spend their holidays? You know, we have Thanksgiving coming up and a week out of school. Mr. Al McKenzie, do you have a response? Yes. Well, in holidays, uh, I usually uh, travel to a big city where a lot of crowds, especially in like New Year or uh, spring break, fall break, to discover the area around or the because uh, our stay in here is limited, so we wanted to explore as much as we can in three years. What about any of the uh, panelists who maybe live on campus? What do you do for the holidays? We have to pay for extra in the dorm, and that's where a lot of international students are concerned. And I think the price should be included with the staying for the whole semester. It's, it should include the holiday season, especially for Thanksgiving that we have one week. And maybe we have it's a good opportunity to go to a house, American home, with some friends, but not all the time. And that's a right, that's one of the rights that international students can have potentially in the future. Um, I do have a, a request of, I believe, a student and uh, Professor Combs. Okay. Um, Okay, our final question is, where do we go from here? And this question is for uh, everyone on the panel. What do we do to improve our relationships with uh, domestic and international students or on ASU campus? Well, um, generally, um, there are variations of programs, um, the whole um, buddy program as far as I know. Um, without these programs, programs, as far as I believe, uh, internationals don't exactly um, feel welcome because uh, uh, the, the segregation is, is quite a lot. It's, I mean, yes, they do feel like they do tend to try to open up. Yes, um, we could actually see these things happen, but um, generally speaking, most of the most of the internationals who come here um, act shy and um, and back away, kind of segregate themselves from the actual environment due to the fact that they're international. They're not exactly um, natives. They're not exactly from a specific place culturally, traditionally. Some uh, programs within the university would definitely help, and they are helping right now, as far as I know. Um, that's generally a beginning to where, where we might actually get to get. Shuang Pei Tong, would you like to respond? Where do we go from here? Uh, I think that uh, just like I said, uh, uh, in order to improve the relationship between international students and American students, I think the most significant thing is we need to uh, in, uh, in, in order to make the relationship deeply. And uh, uh, I saw lots of uh, parties, international parties, uh, ev uh, maybe uh, every week happen in ASU. But uh, sometimes mm, there are not enough people, there are not many people to attend it. I don't know why. Maybe lots of uh, uh, international, international students feel shy at that time and uh, uh, we know uh, we have the courses named uh, bridge course program for all the international students but uh, I, had the, I had these courses uh, right now 
And uh, but I think this course is just to teach us something academic. It will help us to improve the academic levels for the international students. But uh, I think in in that course we need to, as an international students, we need to learn much more about uh, American culture, not just uh, academic knowledge. And uh, maybe some other uh, some other methods can be uh, done like that. I mean, many many activities, many parties will improve the uh, will will make uh, international students know more about native and uh, make Native Americans know more about international. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Would another member of the panel like to respond? Where do we go from here? I think a, I think ASU has should have more events with international students and Americans. What people need to have is interest with uh, to other people. We can live without knowing, without having known to other people from other countries. But if we have interest, we ask more questions. We, we act to get to know other people. And it's diff it is difficult to do in daily life. But if we open up to, if we open more and try to be a little more friendly, I think we can do too. But the events and physical programs like parties can help us doing so. Ms. Blair, I'm sorry. You you want to My answer, like the first personal question I was asked, um, just I would like to like not be treated lightly, you know, not be treated dumb or like shocked when people hear me speak English or even when they just first see me. And there's more to me than meets the eye of just, oh, where are you from? That's all I get. People ask me and I mean, I have like my favorite things. I mean, I have dislikes. There's other things. I mean, where are we from is just like one thing. It doesn't like define us entirely so and it doesn't matter where we come from or what language we speak we're all people going through the inevitably hard times like brings us and I don't want to give an excuse but I will just on a side note say when I do a diversity section to American Connection courses and we look at the different cultures here at ASU looking at race and ethnicity uh, a lot of American students are very surprised that we have for example Last year we had 88 um, Asian American students and so they automatically assume that if someone's Asian that they're from another country, um, which is, is not a correct thing. But I think that the overall one as Americans, we need to realize that international students are our guests. And so when people come in as your guests, even in your home, you want to make them feel comfortable. You want to make them feel welcome so that they can come around. And then the next time they come around, they are they don't have to ask you if you have food in your refrigerator. They just come in and, and get food in your refrigerator. They don't have to ask you, can I come to that event? They just want to come to that event. So uh, as Americans, you know, we do need to be able to to be a little more friendly in all of us, international and Americans, we need to step outside our comfort zone. We are too comfortable with where we are and we have these entitlements that we should not have. And we need to use things as teachable moments. Let's not be afraid to talk to one another. And if we do say something that's not correct, then as long as you're being genuine and respectful, then that person will know that and use that as a teachable moment because that's the only way that we will learn and be able to intermingle with people who look like us and people who don't look like us. Um, I always say that uh, first we must understand and then you try to be understood. So if you think about that, either way, being an international student, working with American students, or vice versa, then I think that we will go a long way with breaking down barriers and learning from one another and being able to appreciate and respect each other. Right. Thank you so much, uh, panelists, and thank you all for coming out today. Uh, some of our panelists 
will be able to stay after uh, this is over. We're going to have to end it now. And I want to thank all the students for taking time to join in on this discussion. You had some really good questions. I want to thank the faculty, staff, and administrators for supporting the forum with your presence. And I really want to thank the panelists for sharing your experiences and your opinions and uh, not being afraid to come up and uh, talk to us about um, how you feel. Uh, this program will air on ASU TV, Channel 18, and we hope that the discussion was helpful for you. We hope that we can improve our relationships with international students, with all the students here on campus. Thank you very much.